Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and this evening I want to play Relic published by Fantasy Flight Games following the Talisman game system. Now I already did a video about this a few years ago uh, shortly after it was released and you can see the rule explanations of the base game in that video. You can find that on lonesomegamer.com. But the game also comes with two expansions. We have here the Nemesis expansion. Again, a lot going on. And the Halls of Terror expansion. And Today I want to focus a little bit here on the Nemesis expansion but I'm also going to add possibly characters and, and cards from the Halls of Terror expansion. The Halls of Terror expansion comes with a map which I'm not going to use simply because I want to do that uh, in another video. I, I want to have an, an occasion to do another video about Relic and that's then when I'm going to use the Halls of Terror with the map. So for now, we focus on the new elements in the Nemesis expansion, which mainly include the player versus player option, which we didn't have in the base game. In the base game, there was uh, barely any interaction. Players did just their own thing and the player who made it first into the center and resolved the challenge there won the game. This time we have also um, a player versus player concept. Okay, so let's set up the game. Okay, we're playing a four-player game. Now three of the players are standard characters and one player plays a nemesis character. So let's see, first of all we have here once again, and we've seen that guy already in the last uh, video or in the last series of videos, the Tech Priest Engine Seer. And it's um, at the end of setup, reveal four war gear cards and acquire one at no cost. Then shuffle the rest back into the deck. Well, I did that and I ended up with this one here, the Living Tome. And that says at the start of your movement phase, you may look at the top card of each threat deck. And that's definitely a strong one, I guess. Then each time you acquire a weapon, armor or equipment card with a charge icon, you may place one additional charge on the card. Weapon, armor and equipment cards do not count toward your asset limit. Reveal three war gear cards and acquire one at no cost, then discard the rest. We can do that uh, sometimes when we level up, whenever this specific symbol shows up. But we'll get to this later. Okay. Now, this is the miniature. And uh, they start, or it starts at the Omission Shrine, which is right here. Okay. There we are. In addition to that, we have our three starting influence, which is basically the money of the game. We have a starting power card, the lightning ref reflexes. Play at the start of a cunning battle. Your cunning value is doubled until the end of the battle. We have a strength value of 2, a willpower value of 1, Cunning value of 4 and 4 life points. And this is my first mission. 
hurry the advance. There is no time for explanation. Report to these locations immediately. When you acquire this mission card, place one character token on a space with a red thread icon and one character token on the different space with a yellow thread icon. If you are on a space with one of the tokens during your acquire asset step, collect the token and place it on this card. The objective is that both character tokens are on this card. Reward, roll one die and gain life equal to the result. Okay, so let me see. One red thread icon and yellow thread icon. Okay. Now we are these, this brown guy here. And we start over here, so we might actually place one here. Or here, mm, hard to tell. I think I'm going to place one here and another one here. And uh, okay, that's it for this guy for now. Now we continue, and we have here the Stormtrooper Sergeant from the Imperial Guard. Now, uh, special abilities, you have the following battle bonus. So basically one in every type of battle. After making a movement roll, you may add one to your movement score. After making a battle roll, you may discard one of your assets to add two to your battle score. And uh, sometimes when we level up, it says draw one war gear card and acquire it at no cost. We start with Strength 3, Willpower 4, Cunning 2, and Life 4. This here is the miniature and we start at the Warhound Titan Bay, which is here. We have a power card with a number 5. It says imitate. Play immediately after another player plays and discards a power card. Take the discarded power card. The mission says never surrender. Though your enemies may defeat you for a time, those who remain true to the Emperor shall always emerge victorious. Place one character token on this card each time you lose a battle. The objectives are two character tokens on this card and as a reward you would gain one level. Now remember, we need to fulfill three of these missions to get a relic, one of these cards here, which is some type of special item, very powerful item, and we need a relic to be allowed to move into the warp rift space. And that is the first step in the inner region. And in the end of the game, we got to end up here in the center to win. Okay. Now here we have... Uh, the Imperial Fist's Terminator. Your enemy's battle rolls cannot explode in battle against you. When making movement rolls, you must roll one additional die. Use the lowest result rolled on all dice as your movement score. Okay. And we have a massive miniature here. So this is the guy. And uh, we start at the docking station, which is also over here.
For some reason, ah yeah, because I have a power limit of two, I start with two power cards. Number four, Litany of Hate. Play at the end of your movement phase. Move one threat card in your tier to any other space in your tier. And a number one card, Pilfer. Play after you win a battle, gain four influence. Now the mission is bring him to justice. An apostate thief exists somewhere in our midst. You are tasked with bringing this traitor to justice. When you acquire this mission card, choose another player and place one of his character tokens on this card, indicating that he is your target. End your movement phase on your target's space. That's the objective. You may take one asset, excluding relics, from your target. Okay. Um, well, I'm not sure which one that will be. I think it's not too important. I think I'm going to take the gray one. This is this guy. He starts right next to me. I'm going to place that one here to indicate that. Okay. Finally, we come to the Nemesis character. I'll get into more detail about her in a minute. Now, this is Githelian Athulwai. A dire Avenger Exarch. Gain two infamy each time a character discards one or more corruption cards. At the start of your movement phase you may move to any webway portal space or any other space containing a forgotten portal card. Then resolve your movement phase normally. If you win a battle against a character, he must discard one corruption card. And this uh, level up thing here says choose a character in your area. That character discards one corruption card if he has any and loses one life. There is also a bounty. If you win a battle against that nemesis, draw one power card. The miniature of the Nemesis is this one here. And uh, she or it, I don't know, it's probably a guy. Uh, he starts at the Elder Falcon Squadron. Squadron. Mm, I have no idea where that is, to be honest. Ah, it's here. Okay. Okay, now let me a little bit explain about this whole nemesis concept of the game. As I said, now with this expansion for the first time, we have a player versus player option. And there are basically now two ways player can fight each other. First of all, we have here the characters. And these characters can kind of fight each other. And the way they would do that is in a skill contest. Now, here we have, for example, this asset here. And you can see here, very small written, apostate. Now, this indicates the moment you acquire that thing, you become an apostate. And until then, everybody starts as a devotee. And only if he gets these items, he becomes an apostate. Characters can challenge other apostates. 
with a skill challenge. If they share the same space, it's a little bit like uh, the standard battle in Talisman, for example. So if I enter a space where there is an apostate, then I can decide to challenge him and I will do a skill challenge. So what I do is, I would simply choose one of my three skills, strength, will or cunning and I'm going to roll a die. If I roll a one, I fail automatically and this whole thing would be over before it actually starts. If I roll better than a one and a six would make the die explode, then um, I add up the end result of my die rolls um, and I add the number of uh, my skill value here and that is then the target value that the challenged character has to beat. So he has to take then the same skill, will also do some rolls or one roll and um, well if he is lower then the challenger wins if it's equal it's a tie otherwise the um, the challenged character will win. Now the outcomes of these things are a little different depending on the uh, on the type of the challenge. I think in a strength test um, the loser loses two life points or something and a cunning test the, the winner can take uh, an asset. I'm not sure about that, it's written in the rules. The thing is we're not going to see that type of challenge in this specific scenario. I determined the scenario randomly. It says shoulder to shoulder and it is a semi-cooperative scenario that means that basically these three characters play against the nemesis. So therefore it makes not a lot of sense if we start attacking each other. On the contrary, we are even allowed, if we share the same space, to trade items and uh, influence with each other. So it's a real cooperative nature now. But I want to emphasize that this is not the case because we have a nemesis here, but it's the case because it's this specific scenario. You can play every scenario with this new nemesis mechanism and then we will also see the characters fighting each other and the nemesis doing uh, her own thing. But this specific scenario makes this thing more a semi-cooperative game. Okay, now let me explain a little bit about the nemesis. And this is now scenario independent. The ne nemesis wins the game if she gets victor, um, infamy points. Um, 25 infamy points. That's the goal of the nemesis. So she starts with zero or he starts with zero and if he manages to get 25 points he wins the game. Now how does he gain infamy points? Well um, first of all let me see if there's something written here. No. Well if he levels up you can see here these markers here they give him an infamy point and then when he would level up further so if he if he leveled up here to the very end then every time he would continue leveling up he would get another infamy point instead 
In addition, there might be some cards or something that will help him to get more infamy. I'm not uh, absolutely sure about that. You can also see that the Nemesis only has a life point, dial, and then a one single skill die. In this case, it's the cunning skill. And yes, it means that every fight or test the nemesis will make goes only against her, um, his cunning ability. Which gives him a big advantage because basically he only has to develop this single ability and he can do that every time he levels up. You can see that here every time he will develop his cunning ability so in the end he will probably have a cunning of 12 and he will always have to test against that. So that is a big advantage here. If the other guys should attack Nemesis and that is something they can do then it is always in the cunning uh, skill and the other way around if Nemesis attacks one of the other guys it's always a cunning battle. There are other Nemesis and there it is another skill but the specific character here or Nemesis here comes with that cunning skill. Okay, um, so uh, this is the main concept of the game. If Nemesis manages to get 25 infamy, he wins the game. Now let's see what the characters have to do. It's this shoulder to shoulder scenario. The countless billion worlds of the Imperium are far from united in their purpose. In a hidebound society steeped in ancient and immutable tradition, rivalry and even outright hatred is handed down from generation to de generation and bitter feuds can span centuries. Even the universal worship of the God Emperor takes many forms and doctrinal debates have often threatened to rip the ecclesiarchy apart from within. Nevertheless, there are times when the bickering factions of the Imperium are united in common cause. Sometimes a threat emerges that is so vile, so monstrous, that it demands the undivided efforts of an entire sector to defeat. Such a threat has arrived and the heroes of the ancient sector must learn to set aside their differences if they hope to prevail. Okay, so let's check the special game rules. Players must use at least one nemesis, two in a six-player game, when playing this scenario. Okay. Each time a player draws a card that has an omen icon, now it's this card here, and I hope that I remember that. Each nemesis gains one infamy. Each time a nemesis draws from his nemesis deck, he draws two cards, he chooses one to resolve and discards the other. If a character ends his movement in another character's space, the former character may choose to give any of his influence, power cards, assets or trophies to the latter character. Okay, that's interesting. So they cannot trade in a standard way, but only the uh, the arriving character can give its stuff to the character that is already there. And then we have here the confrontation. So that's what happens if one character arrives here in the center. And by the way, the nemesis can never enter the inner tier or the center of the board. So this is only possible for characters. 
Choose one of the following options that does not have a character token in its corresponding slot to the right. So these are the slots here. First, discard four influence, then place a character token in the one slot. Second, discard any number of power cards with combined total power numbers of seven or more, then place a character token in the two slot. Third, Lose three life, then, if you were not vanquished, place a character token in the three slot. And fourth, discard one trophy worth four or more trophy points, then place a character token in the four slot. If you cannot complete any of these options, return to your starting space. At the end of your experience phase, if there are character tokens in three slots on this sheet, all Imperium characters win the game together. Okay, so this is a pretty unique scenario, I think, and uh, we'll see how it works out. And by the way, the Nemesis don't start with any missions. There are also no power cards or anything or influence or something. Uh, it starts with just on their own. So first the players go and that is also something that uh, is always is a, is a specific rule of this variant. First all the players make their turns and then all the nemesis players make their turns. Also, the character players make their turns and then the nemesis players make their turns. So, let's finally start this. We go with this tech priest first. Now that is a three. And uh, the goal of the tech priest is to end up in one of these spaces here and then, what does he want to do? Yeah, he wants to fight there. No, no, not exactly. He wants to be on that space during the acquire asset step. Now let me check when exactly that step is happening at the very end of the turn. Uh, so yeah, this guy moves here. And now interaction with the other player would be possible. And uh, I wonder if they can trade missions. No, that's not possible. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to interact with this guy. So I'm going to draw instead a red card, threat card. Now that is a pact of domination. That's an event. Each player may draw one corruption card to gain one strength. Well, well, I don't think I want to do that because She can, or he can, force me to discard corruption cards when I lose a battle. And that brings her in for me, or him, damn it, I'm, I'm always forgetting this. For some reason, I, I have a feeling that is a woman, I don't know why. So, that would give her two in for me, when I would get rid of a corruption card. So, I think I want to avoid that. And I'm not gonna draw a corruption card. Nobody will do that, I guess. I mean, for him, it would be kind of cool. He already has a strength of six, so to go completely on, uh, on strength. But still, I think I don't want to risk that. So therefore, um, Nothing happens due to this event. 
Instead, we come now to the experience phase. Let me see. Resolve encounters, acquire assets. So now we are at the acquire assets step and we are allowed to grab um, this marker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Good start for him. So now the stormtrooper, that's a two. And basically he wants to fight and also lose battles. So, huh, hard to tell. I guess he simply moves here and draws a card. A mercenary deserter. And that is also, damn, it's hard to read that. Yeah, that's also an apostate. So if he takes that guy, he will also become an apostate. And I think here we have now, yeah, that's true. Here we have a an omen icon, right? It seems so. So that means that uh, Nemesis gains one infamy. Okay, that's not good, so let's do that right away. Okay. And then, this deserter, what does he allow us? Once per battle, you may spend one influence to reroll one of your battle dice. That's pretty cool. And then, the Terminator with a six and he's gonna roll another die and that's a three. Oh, he actually I forgot I can add one to the movement score I gotta remember that and he has to take the lower result so he has a three which brings him either here that's a pretty bad idea or what is his goal? He wants to end the movement Ah, that's perfect so he can move here and he ended then his movement there. So he did that. And I think then in the next turn he could take one asset from him, but he doesn't want to do that. But still, he managed to accomplish his first mission which is pretty awesome but I think he can only do that during the experience phase so first he has to have an engagement there and he draws what was that a red one okay that is golf shooter boys an orc if you lose this battle place this card on the orc vag space Ah, he's going to get more boys now and stump you good. So that's a three. I think we have a pretty good chance to kill this guy. So they attack. That's a five and we have a six here. So they are definitely killed. So we can take this as a trophy. And now we can take this mission and... This is now resolved. And if I'm not mistaken, I can now simply draw another commission card exactly. So, uh, have a pretty good start here. Find the traitor. I have my suspicions about this one. When you acquire this mission card, the player to your right must play one of his character tokens on this card, indicating that he is your target. Okay, so. Nemesis are never considered players. So that means that the tech priest is now my target. Occupy the same space as your target at any time during a turn. Gain two influence. If your target has two or more corruption cards, he loses one life. Okay, that's another one that sounds pretty easy to solve. So we're going to place a 
brown character token on this card and it all seems pretty good until now so now it's nemesis and the movement rules are the same roll a, simply roll a die and move that many spaces that is one space okay um, Hmm. Okay, now I can choose between the Webway Portal and the Abandoned Ruins. Now I think what I want to do is I want to move to that Webway Portal. The reason is, I'm not sure if it's good, but whenever I move to a space where there is a box, I don't have to follow the instructions of the box, but I draw one of these special Nemesis cards which are each nemesis has its specific deck here and I think although I'm not absolutely sure about that they are usually good for me so I'm gonna draw a card here and that says desperate allies place this card in your play area play with the top card of the red blue and yellow threat decks revealed what Add one to your battle score for each enemy threat card visible on top of these decks. Discard this card if you gain any infamy. These Elder data sheets give us unparalleled insight into this region, but why would they want to help us? Okay, so. Play with the top card of the red, blue, and yellow threat decks revealed. Okay, let's do that. And by the way, I think I could have checked, yeah, I could have had a look at the threat decks here, but okay. And okay. Now, this, the blue one, is definitely a problem here. I still don't really get that. Add one to your battle score for each enemy threat card visible. Now, these are all threat cards, I think. So I guess once they are resolved, I don't flip the next card, I guess. Well, this is a weird card. It really is. Hmm. Well, I think... I think this is how it works, but I really don't know. Okay, I think I get this. Um, it is indeed in a way that these cards remain face up. She gets plus one for each card with an enemy, I guess. I'm not absolutely positive, but I think that is the case. So where is there? Yeah, I think that's... I'm not sure about that threat card thing, but I think... Enemy threat. Yeah, exactly. And... <coughs> yeah, and once she gains infamy, this whole effect ends then. That's a little strange, but... Okay. I think it makes sense. So... Uh, yeah, um, that was actually her, um, his action. And now it's again the, the tech priest with the roll of a two. So the goal is to end up here. Uh, so I don't know where to go. I mean, I want to move here. 
that would allow me to gain power cards. Hmm. Okay, so we would have this freebooter here, and that says add one to this enemy's battle score for each influence you have. And uh, I have three influence right now, so I think I cannot kill this guy, I only have uh, a strength of two. Therefore, I think I'm simply going to move in there, and I don't want to spend anything to buy power cards, I guess. And I'm, I mean, I could draw a power card. Maybe I want to do that. That's a five. In three influence for each card discarded that way. Hmm. Your cunning value is doubled until the end of the battle. Well, hard to tell. I mean, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to, I don't know, I think I'm actually going to keep this card instead and discard that one. Okay, Stormtrooper, that's a two, and uh, I mean he could attack that fire or that, that free booter, why not? Let's see what happens if he loses the battle. If you win, that's not the case. Okay, so yeah, losing the battle is not too bad for him. So he now simply rolls. Uh, While well, he gets attacked, this guy has a strength of 5 against him, so that is holy crap, that's a lot, that's 11 and three so that's 14 this poor guy only has a three okay that is not enough so he loses this battle and by the way that freebooter of course ends here but that's not too bad because I have my never surrender mission so I will lose one life point however I can place a character token on this card so in a way I guess I'm fine with that and now we're gonna flip this blood X mega knob pretty strong guy and again Terminator and that is a six however he has to roll another die which is a three so yeah we will we have to do this and where do we want to go we want to end up on the hmm ah shit I should have played that card that was stupid so I can only move here now. Mm, fuck. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to move here. And draw this card here, the Pact of Perception. Each player may draw one Corruption card to gain one Cunning. Well, we're not going to do that. We don't want to help nemesis so nothing happens here and uh, now it is nemesis and that is a five so right now he's pretty strong he's got four this basic value of four plus three because we have three enemies here and uh, that means yeah she's definitely pretty uh, he's definitely pretty strong so he kind of wants to move in our direction now one two three four five 
and that is also not so bad again we have a box here and we don't have to encounter that box I have to find a better way to to handle the lightning here I got these new um, soft boxes here but I got a feeling that it is kind of too bright or something I'm not sure and anyway um, we got that box here so again we have to draw one of these special cards and that's pretty cool this is the starlight blade looks like a great weapon at the start of your experience phase if there are no corruption cards in play gain one infamy now this is obviously an insanely strong card for him that's exactly what he needed um, so that means we have now the experience phase so he will get one infamy and it also means that the desperate ally score card goes away now and I also think that these cards are flipped back now although I'm not positive about that so we gotta remember that the blue card is really bad and the red one is also not too good but sooner or later we have to face the blue card I guess and we already see that yeah I don't I don't have a good feeling about the the characters it seems like Nemesis is in a good shape now because now actually we have to try to get some corruption cards so let's see where this is possible so that's the tech priest he's got a six so he could move here that is not a bad idea the battle fleet Antius draw one mission huh on the other hand he wants to end up here somehow but then again maybe I want some cool war gear so yeah I'm gonna move here draw three of these cards each time you acquire a weapon armor or equipment card with a charge icon okay Cool. So, okay, that's interesting. We have the Cadian sniper rifle. After you make a battle roll during a cunning battle, you may spend one shard from this card to reroll one die. That is pretty good, no doubt. The scissor hand is definitely. I cannot afford that. The web gun is also not. Uh, it's definitely too expensive for me so that means I end up with this sniper rifle three bucks and I get three charges Okay, um, actually, wait a second, I might have made a mistake here, but now it's a little late. I think the die actually exploded there if after I rolled a six. Okay, well, that doesn't happen during movement rolls, only during battle rolls or skill tests so I'm fine here now it's again the this guy here ah. okay that is a one and I think that's pretty good
I can move here, get rid of this blue guy, of this blue card, and lose my second battle. This is not exactly great, but uh, that sucks. Would have been cool to to get Sister Hospitaller. But okay, Fabius Bile. At the start of this battle, you may choose a player in your tier, move him to your space, and add his willpower value to your battle score. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm pretty sure we cannot. I mean, we could, of course. Why not? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's grab this guy here. And we can add three to the battle score. Maybe we're lucky, get some exploding die or something, and maybe we can make it then. So first, the other guy attacks. Okay, that's not so bad, actually. That's a 13. And now let me see. That's a 13. I have a battle I have a battle rating of 4 or a willpower rating of 4. Hmm. Now if I pay a 5 that would bring me to 9 and that's not quite enough to beat him. So, uh, that kind of sucks, basically. <sighs> hmm. It's interesting. I could discard one of my assets to add two to the battle score. Now, let's see. On the other hand, this guy is pretty awesome. Hmm. You may spend one charge from to reset your life to your starting value. Holy crap. But this is an encounter. This is not an asset. So, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do a standard battle. I, I want to keep this guy. So let's see. Now, that's a one. Okay, so I will lose that battle. But okay, in the end, it's not so terrible. Um, I'm the only one affected by this, so the other guy doesn't lose anything. Uh, so I lose another life point, that isn't great, so I'm down to two. However, I get a second token here, and that means now I can gain one level as a reward. which gives me an additional cunning and actually I have a plus one here but it still would have been not enough even with that card I guess anyway and then I can draw one war gear card and acquire it at no cost now let's hope it's something cool well that's not that great digital weapons Two charges. After dice are rolled during battle, you may spend one charge from this card to add one to your battle score. Well, that's not bad. Okay, um, and I can draw a new mission card. Report to the Fortress World. Commander, Commander Cray requests your presence. If I were you, I would not take this request lightly. Objective, resolve the bombard ability on the Fortress World Comorac Com space. Reward, take another turn after your experience phase. Well, that Fortress World is up here. So, that kind of sucks. By the way, if you have any idea what I can do to avoid that, that I don't know how it is called, overexposure or what, so that it's just white, you know what I mean. Maybe, maybe you can help me there. 
Uh, maybe there is a way to... I don't know what I can do against that. I have to fiddle around somehow with my light here, but uh, I don't have any experience with that. Okay, so um, yeah, that's not too great. Somehow I have to move in here. Uh, we have to find a way for that. Maybe I'm going to draw another mission. That's also possible. We'll find out. Okay, so let's finish this round. We go with this guy. He wants to move to this space here. Well, that's not going to happen, but maybe he can get closer. That's a five, two, three, four, five. Well, definitely not good here. Um, hmm. One, two, three, four, five. I might go here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, let's do that. Okay, I'm going to move two, three, four, five. I'm going to move here. and simply draw a card. Thousand Suns Chosen. At the start of this battle, discard one power card. If you win this battle, gain one influence. That's not great. So, I think I want to discard this one. I mean, this gives me influence, which is kind of cool. Why don't I have any influence? Ah, I do. There we go. Okay, so this card goes away, which is sad. And, uh, well, let's see what we can get here. First we see an attack. That's not so much, but it's still enough. This is a 9, so I need a 6 if I want to win that. Ah, shit, I forgot to roll the uh, the second die, but okay. Okay, I lost here. So that means I lose a life point. And this guy remains here on that space. So... Next, it's Nemesis again. And he rolls a die, and that is a five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Could move here again. Hmm. So this time, I'm going to move here, one, two, three, four, five, just to show you now these cards here. These are so-called agent cards. And any time uh, Nemesis ends up on a space with a threat token, uh, instead of the matching threat cards here, Nemesis draws uh, the matching number of these agent cards. So we simply draw this one and that is a Vostroyan Firstborn. An agent, an Imperial Guard. Add one to this agent's battle score for each other agent Imperium card in your area. Well okay, there is none. Every family of Vostroya tithes their Firstborn to the Guard. So this has a combat value of 2. I have a combat value of 4 plus 1 because of my blade. So it's a 5. So we see the attack. That's a 5 and I don't have to roll anymore to kill this guy. Okay, so that means I can take this one as a trophy. And this is now exactly the same if I get 
six of those I can level up. So uh, yeah, definitely also something I want to do. And then, because of this thing here, it's the experience phase now, there are no corruption cards in play, I will get another infamy point. Okay, so for now I think it doesn't look bad for Nemesis. He's got that amazing blade, which gives him definitely a big advantage. On the other hand, the others did also well with their missions. Two of them are already resolved. <clears throat> this guy is a little weak with only two life points. But hey, anyway. Uh, so, um, if you have any ideas how I can improve the lightning here, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.